A governor of Somalia presented the 2025 board of over three trillion naira to Lagos House of Assembly. President Tinubu pledges to prioritize citizens' welfare, optimistic of positive results from his administration's reforms. On the foreign scene, International Criminal Court, announcement of arrest warrants triggers foolish response across various political spectrum. And in sport, Super Falcons to no opponents for 2024 Women's Africa Cup of Nations. Now, the details. I am Sarah Ade Sawyer. The Lagos State Governor Babajide Solu has presented the 2025 budget estimate of 3.005 trillion naira to State House of Assembly tagged budget of sustainability. Governor Solu described the budget as a blueprint for continuity, resilience, and prosperity for Lagosians, targeting five key pillars including infrastructure, sustainability, economic diversification, social inclusion, governance, and international institutional reforms. Governor Solo described the budget as a blueprint for continuity, resilience, and prosperity for Lagosians. Targeting five key pillars, including infrastructure, sustainability, economic diversification, social inclusion, governance and institutional reforms. According to him, investment will be made in the education, healthcare, and social welfare, as well as expansion of the existing roads, infrastructure, drainage systems to mitigate the impact of climate change. I'm going to end to play the part in building the Lagos that it works. Let us remember that sustainability is not just about preserving resources, it is also about creating opportunity for the future while meeting the needs of the present. The development of any mega city like ours is the responsibility of both the public and the private sector. And to this end, we will continue to explore public private partnership strategies in the provision of infrastructure, in the provision of social services and the conversion of the challenges to opportunities within the context of the scarce resources available. Support initiatives that ensure access to finance to assist micro, small entrepreneurs, startups, and other innovative technological programs, and also the tourism sector to attract foreign investment and position Lagos as a truly competitive state. Our correspondent, Adela Kindle, reports that the budget is expected to impact positively on the lives of over 12 million Lagosians and set the tone on how governance will be driven in 2025 using technology to drive effective service delivery in the state. A speaker of the of the Lagos State House of Assembly, Muda Shirogasa has urged Nigerians to keep the hope alive in the midst of economic challenges in the country. Obasa made the call during the presentation of the 2025 budget estimate to the House by Governor Babajide Sonlu. Obasa said the 2025 budget estimate, themed Budget of Sustainability, is a confirmation of the government's commitment to sustainable development and economic growth. We recognize the current economic upheaval, but we are, up, we are confident that our strategic plans will stimulate growth, attract investment, and improve the standard of living for the budget. He said the budget of sustainability will further boost the realization of remarkable economic transformation, infrastructural renewal, and development towards a greater Lagos. A correspondent, Abiola Fagolago, reports that the capital expenditure of the budget size is 1.66 trillion naira, which represents 59%, while the recurrent is 1.239 trillion naira, representing 41%. The Nigeria Community Action for, Sur for Resilience and Economic Stimulus, NGKS, Lagos State Livelihood Support Delivery Platform, 
2.3 has empowered about 5,000 vulnerable persons in four local government areas of Lagos State. The empowerment, which was done in collaboration with the Lagos State Ministry of Women Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, WAPA, was set up by the federal government to assist indigent persons across the state. Speaking at the event, which was held at the Women Development Center, Agege, the head of the Lively Delivery Platform, Lagos Cares, Tony Salami, said it is part of the program established to eradicate poverty as well as strengthen small and medium enterprises as the sector as the bedrock of the country's economy. Salami noted that the previous editions have impacted over 3,000 beneficiaries and the ongoing edition is targeted at 5,000 beneficiaries with about 3,300 already impacted on. On her part, the facilitator, Buki Femiajala, explained that beneficiaries were trained on business management skills, bookkeeping and other managerial skills for a thriving business enterprise. Earlier, beneficiaries hinted on incorporating the training they have acquired into their businesses, adding that the grants given to them would help to acquire more equipment and enhance their work productivity. As part of its efforts in empowering the electorate with their basic rights and responsibilities, the Lagos State Office of Political, Legislative and Civic Engagement has held a one-day advocacy on voter education in a Kurdu division. Special advisor to the governor on political, legislative and civic engagement, Tajidi Nifalabi, while welcoming the participant at the Palace of, of the Ayangbure of Ikurudu, said the event is part of the office's mandate to educate citizens on their right and responsibilities as voters, as well as the government's role in serving its people. He also said the power attached to the fulfillment of civic responsibility is important to the extent that it influences the decision-making process of a government, noting that voter apathy during election can negatively impact the electoral process and undermine the outcome of an election. Appreciating the participant, Permanent Secretary, Office of Political, Legislative and Civic Engagement, Shalapomi Shashari, said another area that needs focusing on is how to assist the elderly during the electoral process so that they can also exercise their civic rights. On his part, the Ayungwara of Ikurudu, His Royal Majesty, Oba Kabiru, should to be assured the state government that the residents of Ikurudu will remain committed to fulfilling their civic rights through voting, calling for more polling booths to cater for the ever-increasing residents of the area. The participants were exposed to various initiatives of the government by other invited agencies such as the Lagos State Health Scheme, LASHMA, Lagos State Resident Registration Agency, LASHRA, as well as the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA. <laughs> And now to the rest of the stories. President Bola Tinubu says Nigerians are now seeing the positive result of his administration's reforms. While receiving the managing director of the International Monetary Fund, IMF, IMF, Kristalina Jodvia, on the sidelines of the G20 Leaders Summit in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Tinubu assured that his administration will continue prioritizing the welfare of the poor and most vulnerable, even as the economic reforms bear fruit. He acknowledged that the reforms had weakened Nigeria's purchasing power, but said his government will continue to provide social safety nets to cushion the unintended consequences. President Tinubu also emphasized the critical need for educational access, stressing that substantial resources must be invested to stimulate the much-needed infrastructural development in the country, saying he's also working on tax reforms to stimulate the economy further. In her remarks, the IMF Managing Director, Kristalina Jodvea, commended the Tinubu administration's economic reforms and their positive indicators. Jadvia expressed her readiness to offer technical support for the budgeting process, adding that it will assist Nigeria in achieving the best possible result from loans.
Karachi State Governor Bala Mohamed has presented a 465 billion naira budget proposal for the 2025 fiscal year to the State House of Assembly. The proposed budget, an 18% increase from the 2024 appropriation, reflects what the governor described as a response to reforms and inflationary trends impacting sectors across the country. Bala noted that the 2024 budget had been implemented up to 18%. The governor outlined allocations to key sectors, including social sector, targeting children, health care, and welfare and justice. They stressed the importance of completing ongoing projects while initiating new ones to address critical needs, implementation of new minimum wage, contributory pension scheme, and the adherence to budgetary guidelines to deliver immediate impact. Bala also urged the Assembly to expedite the budget's passage to facilitate the timely implementation of the programs and projects. Responding Speaker of the State Assembly, Abubakar Sulaiman, commended the executive for their timely submission of the budget proposal, assuring the governor of swift consideration and approval to ensure the state's continued development. And now to the rest of the stories. The announcement of the arrest warrants by the International Criminal Court, ICC, for Israel's current Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, and former Defense Minister, Yohad Gallant, has triggered a furious response from leading Israelis across the political spectrum. By contrast, it has been welcomed by Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and ordinary citizens in Gaza. Leading Israeli figures across the political spectrum have reacted angrily to the announcement. President Isaac Herzog, called it a dark day for justice and humanity, saying the decision has chosen the side of terror and evil over democracy and freedom. Chairman of Knesset Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee, Yuli Eldesten, called it a shameful decision by a political body held captive by Islamist interests, while Israeli's foreign minister said the ICC had lost its legitimacy. Hamas has welcomed the decision without commenting on the issuing of a warrant for its own military commander, Mohammed Dave. Instead, calls on countries around the world to cooperate with the courts in bringing the Zionist war criminals, Nantayu and Gallant, and to work immediately to stop the crimes of genocide against defenseless citizens in Gaza Strip. Meanwhile, international lawyers have expressed doubt over whether either man will ever be brought to Hague for trial. And now in sport, nine-time champions, Nigeria Super Falcons, will know their opponents for the group phase of next year's Women Africa Cup of Nations competition when the draw is conducted at the Technic Center of the Mohammed Six Football Complex and Sale outside Rabat, Morocco, on Friday evening. The field of 12 finalist teams will be framed into three groups of four teams each, with the top two teams in each group, as well as the best two third place teams in the three groups, advancing to quarterfinals of the competition scheduled for Morocco. Of the 12 previous tournaments held since Nigeria hosted inaugural in 1998, the Super Falcons have been victorious nine times, with Equatorial Guinea winning twice and South Africa sweeping to victory in the last edition, also hosted by Morocco in July 2022. The 13th Women's Cup of Nations finals will take place from the 5th of July 26th. The 13th Women Africa Cup of Nations finals will take place from the 5th of July to 26th of July 2025. Uh, just before we go, do not drink and drive. You can follow us and like all our various social media platforms, X at Traffic Radio 961, Facebook, Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM, Instagram, Lagos Traffic Radio 961. Subscribe and watch your news live on YouTube, Traffic Radio 961. You can also visit our website, www.trafficradio961.com.
Dotang. Did you know that the Sonlo administration strengthened the alliance with 200 representatives from various women-focused NGOs in the state? as part of efforts to alleviate the economic plight of women residents in the state. You can get more details on the Lagos State Government website. To end the news, have the highlight of the major stories. The Lagos State Governor, Babaji Disunlu, has presented the year 2025 budget estimate of 3.005 trillion naira to the State House of Assembly, tagged budget of sustainability. President Bonat Tinubu said Nigerians are now seeing the positive results of his administration's reforms. We also told you that the announcement of arrest warrants by the International Criminal Court, ICC, for Israel's current Prime Minister, Benjamin Netayu, and former Defense Minister, Yohav Gallant, has triggered a foolish response from leading Israelis across the political spectrum. And in sport, nine-time champions, Nigeria Super Falcons, will know their opponents for the group phase of next year's Women Africa Cup of Nations competition when the draw is conducted at the Technic Center of the Mohammed Six Football Complex in Sale outside Rabat, Morocco on Friday. For contact with the newsroom, send a message to info at trafficradio961.ng. That is the news broadcast compiled by Adesua and Joyuka. I am Sarah Adesoya. Thank you for listening and God bless you.